It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman, and this show is brought to you by emailrevealer.com. You go to emailrevealer.com, you can get an autographed copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator, uh, but also to uh, all kinds of different services at emailrevealer.com. We have uh, Thanksgiving coming up and, and Christmas coming up. So if you're looking to reconnect with a long lost friend or an old relative, uh, we've got a people search feature on there. Uh, Locates and you want to, if you've been separated by the adoption process, we can then reunite your uh, family you've been separated through by the adoption process. Uh, asset searches, locates. Um, uh, if, if you think your spouse is cheating on you, you give us your email address and we trace it back to online dating websites. We catch them cheating online. All that can be found at emailrevealer.com. Okay. Uh, we got an important show today and, and it's a difficult show. It's a painful show. Uh, we have Ira Peskowitz, who's the father of Danielle Brigoli. Danielle Brigoli is that little girl, the little kid you saw on that TV show, Dr. Phil. And, uh, and she's the kid. Who, she says, catch me outside. How about that? And so they made a big joke out of it. And here's this kid, a troubled kid, a kid, at-risk kid who needs help. And, and uh, we just feel like she's been exploited. We have her dad on the show. And uh, he's out of it's a heartbreaking story, very similar to my story. Everybody who knows my story of fighting for custody of my daughter, the, the fight of my life, you know. And here I see this guy here uh, down here in Florida who was going through the same situation. No one loves their kid more than a dad, you know. And, and here he is on our show here to, to tell his experience of what happened with his daughter, Danielle Brigoli Peskowitz. Uh, Mr. Peskowitz, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Ed. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell us about yourself. Who is Ira Peskowitz? Well, I'm a 49-year-old. Uh, grew up in Long Island. Uh, you know, one of the things you said before, I'm a, I was adopted at the age of 10 months hmm. to um, to a great set of parents. Uh, and within within uh, within all those years, I attempt, I attempted to always you know inquire about my adopted parents. And uh, my parents told me as much as they possibly knew. And um, about 14 years ago, I took my um, my experience, you know, in, in 24 years of law enforcement um, to research and to try to find my biological parents. And, and I did. So it was a great, uh, um, a great experience. Um, and, and, and it's an important one uh, to, to understand who, who your, your, you know, your biological parents parents are who your you know adopted parents are and everything like that so i know you mentioned that in the beginning of your of your show so um, i've been in law enforcement for uh 24 years uh my whole life basically is around public safety i've been to you know, police academy fire academy paramedic school uh, i love i teach tennis uh i'm a volunteer in a lot of organizations nonprofits. so i like to give back to the community i'm also you know a uh, the loving husband of my, of my great wife, and I've got two great boys um, who are going to be 10 and 12. And uh, I live here down in uh, uh, South Florida, and I work full time as a as a law enforcement officer. Now, what about the, with Danielle? Uh, were, were you married to her mom? No, I was never married. Okay, and, and so then, like I was saying to you off the air, to prepare for the show, I rewatched because, like everyone else, you know, everyone is flipping the channels. You watch it the first time, you know, you clip through this, and it's very, I guess. Uh, sensational you know but when i rewatched it after i talked to a few times with email and back and forth and i rewatched the episode of dr phil of your little daughter who's a little kid especially on that show she's a little kid and it's, it's so painful to watch how did we get to that situation where little danielle uh was like a we're talking with this street accent you know and uh having this troubled life how did we get to that well i i i Unfortunately, I have no part in, in, in her upbringing, and we'll get to that. And uh, but I feel very bad that I didn't know about these things for, for many years. Uh, when, I, when I met Danielle for the first time prior to Dr. Phil, uh, I was privy to some things that were happening to Danielle uh, 
one of Barbara's, uh, the biological mother, uh, Barbara, um, reached out um, to me to meet her. One of uh, Barbara's ex-boyfriends reached out to me prior and told me some of the hardships that Daniel was having. And, and, and I met her and, and I was able to hear and see some of her hardships. So um, at that time, I uh, attempted to get um, Danielle, you know, onto my uh, insurance at, at work. And uh, I, I set up this uh, unit from our agency to go out and help Danielle. To prevail, the mother denied the insurance, didn't want to have Danielle sent to any program, and um, didn't follow up with any any care that was offered um, for, for Danielle. And the reason why she did this, because I didn't know until I was told by, by um, a third party that Barbara had made prior arrangements three times, attempted to get on Dr. Phil, and she was going to go on Dr. Phil. Mm. So that was the first exposure to bring um, this troubled child, my daughter, um, into the life of the, wor- the world to see. Now, when did you first meet Danielle? How old was she? She was, uh, she was 13. It was right after um, uh, her 13th birthday. Okay, and uh, uh, so then what happened? Like you, you, it was like a fling with the mom, and then uh, you had no contact at all with the child? Yeah, apparently, um, not apparently, but factually, um, the the mother and I, um, we had an unsteady relationship, and um, I was a little upset at the fact that uh, I was kind of misled uh, in regards to, to, I guess, I mean, everybody knows how, how kids are made, but I was kind of misled into the the, uh, the conception and deception of how Daniel came apart in this world. And um, I knew at that time that I had a responsibility. I had a responsibility of a child to, to take care of a child, to give the child love, you know, to make sure that the, the child, I say my you know, child, my daughter, um, give her a, a roof over her head and make sure that she's um, secure in life. But um, Barbara, the biological mother, was so um, irate and so toxic to uh, my life, uh, my wife's life, uh, my family's life, that my wife and I said, "Hey, you know, maybe maybe it'll be so it'll be okay if we just let Barbara raise Danielle uh, and just have her, you know, move on and not interfere with my my place of employment, not write complaints to Internal Affairs, not call." Um, the Internal Revenue Service, not call animal care control, not call Florida Department of Law Enforcement, not make death threats against my wife, which is a warrant for Barbara's arrest in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. not harass my my um, adopted family and my biological family. Um, she was so detrimental to to the well being for my wife and I that um, unfortunately I, we I had to just. Um, this part for a little while and to see what happened. You know, I did try. I, I did try to set up visitations and I, and, and we set up um, child support and I did pay child support, you know, um, all these years, uh, close to $1,100 a month. And um, throughout the years, I, I tried to, to be part of Danielle's life, sending her um, some gifts, sending emails to the mother. And every time I sent an email, she would either call law enforcement and say that I'm harassing and threatening them by wanting to see my daughter, which was kind of strange why even law enforcement would even go out there and entertain uh, a call for service like that. But um, but I have the reports um, to do that. And then, then she would continue us on her um, over 22 complaints to um, the sheriff's office where, where I work from internal affairs all the way up to the sheriff, um, slandering me, defaming me, uh, blatantly lies, uh, no, attacking well, my, let me ask you my this. credibility. So, so yeah. you, you were paying child support from birth until 13, roughly? Well, up to 14, yeah. Okay. And uh, did you try like family mediation center, that kind of stuff? And those kind of, uh, I guess, oh, like first oh. step kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Listen, we tried. Yeah. We tried everything. And Barbara was so irate and so negative. Um, you know, and the point, Ed, also, too, is that every time we tried to do something, you know, the pushback, the pushback, and more legal fees and legal fees right. and legal fees. And I think it's disgusting, just disgusting, the way this world is with, with family law and family attorneys and the amount of money. I'm not saying my attorney, but I'm just saying the, the game that they play. 
the, the, the enjoyment, the entertainment to sit there and to take advantage of vulnerable parents. Uh, another plea, another motion, uh, bill them for this email, bill them for that. I'm just saying it is so disgusting in our society that a parent has to pay thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars to be part of their child's life because one parent wants to alienate the other child. Disgusting. You know, if you're, if you're a hardcore criminal and you make $12,000 a year, you don't work, you get a public defender. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're the same parent who only makes minimum wage and can't afford a private attorney, but you want to fight for the rights of your children in your fatherhood or your motherhood, you can't get that same representation. You will be destroyed in court because another party might have more money, might pay, you know, an attorney, you know, a lot of money to, to make you look like the bad person. Um, it's just, the system is just, is just yeah, yeah. horrible. Now, my own personal experience in the audience knows me, me and my ex-wife, but, but we paid about $30,000 to a custody evaluator. You know, to, to, you know, like, like a psychologist to evaluate us and decide, you know, and if you didn't have that money to pay, they'll already, well, okay, then you don't get to see your kids. The other side, they want to pay. They, they get to see him. So this is out there now. Um, but did Barbara, did she have the, the funds to hire an expensive attorney in all this? The mother? In the beginning, in the beginning, she went through a few attorneys and, um, and so did I. Right. Um, I, I was misled. I had one attorney who would just show up to court and never be prepared, no documents and just swing it, you know, and you know, a lot of times these days, which, which I don't agree Ed, and you probably know this and I don't know if it goes on in other States, but if you're an attorney and you date donate money to a judge's campaign, you shouldn't be able to argue your case in front of that judge. Because if one attorney say, for example, gives $10,000 and he's arguing and the other attorney never gave any money to your campaign and you're arguing a case, I'm just talking about being impartial and fair. So this whole thing, all these attorneys know each other, all the family court, you know, attorneys and judges, whatever, everybody knows each other. They mingle at events. They do this, they do that. It's it's a whole process of injustice to, to, to a parent and to a child. It's just disgusting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we, personally, we, yeah. I spent over six figures yeah. in legal fees between now and when Daniel was born. Yeah, so, so did I. And, and we have the same exact system here in Clark County, Nevada, where, and, and in my case, too, where my ex-wife's attorney was uh, donating the money to the judge. It's in the newspapers. It's, it's, a, it's a big story. Uh, donating money to the judge, and even during our case, was her campaign fundraiser all her campaign uh, fund donations were going through his office to her while he was hearing our case finally he took himself off the case finally uh, but, but the same thing here and also too uh, yeah i know i know and then another thing too is um uh, what these custody evaluators and the property evaluators and, and these classes you got to take everyone knows they're all getting kickbacks all kicking back that money to the attorneys who recommend them instead of judges who, who give them. It's all, you know, it's wide out in the open. It's no one even tries to hide it. So it's a but whole thing. All, yeah. all the mediators are attorneys, right? It's all a money-making you scam. Know, yeah. It is. It is disgusting. There's not one time that I can name in these 14 years that anything was produced in front of the courts for the best interest and the care for Danielle. Right. Period. And, and as a guy in law, law you know. as a guy in law enforcement, yeah. you know, you, you see people. Okay, maybe they're, they're drug dealers or they're, they're organized crime. They're criminals, you know. But even those guys don't. They're not so low as to make their living off of a, a little children and ripping little children away from their parents and, and exploiting little children. And there's no other place on earth than, than family court. Yeah, every, you know, look, every child has a right to, to, to know who their parent is and have a relationship as long as it's not detrimental to the child's right. well-being. Um, and, and we know, you know, there's people who are incarcerated in, 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 in prisons, you know, who still get to see their children. Right. The issue is that when you take a, a viable parent who is an asset to the community, who has a good track record of being a parent, um, who's established themselves, and to tear that parent down, in the court systems and public records to blatantly lie 
blatantly lie and perjure your credibility and an officer of a court to do such things is disgusting. Every attorney who lies, everybody from the Department of Juvenile Justice who lied in part of my daughter's case, everybody from her, 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 her handler's team, they all should be charged criminally. The attorney should be disbarred, and the people who lie and the people who bring up things that are untruthful in the court system, under oath, or testifying in front of a judge of the court, you should lose your credibility, your certificate, and you should be sentenced to, to, to jail time, period. Because, Ed, me as a law enforcement officer, this isn't about me being a law enforcement officer. This is about me being a father. But they would use that for their advantage. They know there's certain things I could do and couldn't do. They knew at the flick of a, 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 of a switch that if they didn't like anything, they could call internal affairs or they could call Florida Department of Law Enforcement and say, oh, uh, Mr. Peskowitz lied under oath and we want him decertified. And they would go after me and use those things. I mean, they, they didn't, the mother has, um, but the legal team, I'm sure if they had the opportunity to do so, when, if I was ever able to testify, they would try to have me decertified in a heartbeat. And who knows the bureaucracy and the politics behind the doors of, 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 of these attorneys. Each and every one of them had a part that was just horrific. Her, my daughter's defense attorney lied to the judge, blatantly lied. He had no business arguing anything about family matters. But since it was a unified court, you know, I say a diary of the mouth. Whatever he said, he went out there. If the, if, if the judge came back with an order and said something, they would cry and cry and cry. And the judge would say, okay, give me, in two weeks, give me a reason why I shouldn't go like this. I mean, whatever they said, it was entertained. I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not for me, but you have to understand, our judge was a brand new judge. He just became a judge in January. He's young. He was a prosecutor a couple of years. He was in, in private practice at, at, at a place here in South Florida. And all of a sudden, he's hearing a family court case in unified family court. Explain to me why this didn't go in front of an experienced family judge who knew about family law. That's like me graduating police academy after six months. And my first assignment is a mass shooting at a homicide scene. Just because I have the basics doesn't mean I understand all this stuff and have experience with it. The books to books, you have to have real life on the job training and experience. So the other team took full advantage of it. I mean, even one of the attorneys, mentioned it. Oh, Your Honor, we're not really taking advantage of you because you are new, but this law says this, this, and that. Mm. They knew exactly what they were doing. It, 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 it is hard. It is a part of my life that, that, that has to just be removed. I, I, can't, I can't focus yeah. on all this negativity, this nastiness, these blatant attacks. It, it is me. the worst thing you can go you through know. in your life, you know, because you know you care about your kids, and, you, and you're, it's the most vulnerable time, and it's the most stressful time of your life. Where where do we stand right now? What what is your custody situation? Your visitation situation? Do you talk to your daughter at all? No, we're. Uh, uh, i have just basically just let you know it's it's right. it's a period of time that uh, I've I moved on. Uh, I have a two boys. I love dearly. I have my wife, I have a career, I have family and friends. There's a time in your life, Ed, that you can't continuously focus all of your energy and all of your money on a problem that you cannot control. You cannot fight the numerous attorneys. You cannot fight the Department of Juvenile Justice. You cannot fight the Department of Children and Families, which I'll tell you right now is one of the most inept, mm -hmm. incompetent agencies in the state of Florida. Just Google all those articles. The, 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 um, the, the reports that I got in regards to what happened to my daughter in all these years, the numerous law enforcement reports, 60 plus within a seven month period that Boynton Beach police responded to their house 
and fail to do their due diligence, how am I supposed to continue paying $1,100 in child support, thousands of dollars in legal fees, all of my time off on my days off, getting documents, going to court, reviewing this, doing that, doing that. You can't do it, Ed. Yeah, I know. You, you need to, you know, you, there's a time that you have to sacrifice one to protect the other two. And my kids, you know, last year, this year it's getting a little better, but last year they were teased like crazy at school because nobody really liked Danielle because she was, she was a bully. She was rude to people on the internet, you know, and um, they went to my boys and they would say that phrase, you know, and they thought they were being picked on and which, which they were. And then the other kids were asking them, when is Danielle going to come out? Cause we want to kick her ass hmm. because she, she, she's bully people. You know, a lot of kids don't like people like kids who bully people, but on the internet, all she does is just bully people. So, you know, it, it is just, it, it's a time for, for, for your sanity. You know, you can't continuously try to fight something, like I said before, that you're just not going to win. Look, everybody knows I've tried, and I've got people from all around the world who support me. I've got a lot of people um, from a lot of different places. You know, I did, I did interviews around the world. Let me ask and you this. Let me ask you, you this. Can, yeah. How old is sure. Daniel today? She's 14. She's she's still 14 today? Yep. Oh my god. Okay. She gets, and wait, and she she's on child. she has probation. She's on some kind of 5-year probation for what are those charges? Oh, uh, I guess they're well, there's grand theft of a motor vehicle, grand theft, you know, using her mother's credit cards. Uh Let's see. Lying under a police report, making a false 911 claim. Uh, right. Possession of marijuana. Um, yeah, those are those are just some of the some of the claims, felonies, and misdemeanors. Are these all charges related to the Doctor Phil show? Everything was prior to Doctor Phil, except right after the ma the marijuana one was after Doctor Phil. Okay, but these were all prior to Doctor Phil. How did she wind up on Doctor Phil? I guess her mom. She she begged three times to finally get on there. And they finally, I guess, heard enough. I mean, Barbara's the type of person who's very persistent. She will go and go and go and go after somebody or something. She has, she doesn't work. There's nothing else better to do, but to harass and torment me and my family. And, and I'm not the only one that she does it to every, every boyfriend that she's ever had. She's either sued or made false police reports or maybe true police reports against them. I mean, it's all, it's all public record. You know what, explain to me how somebody who could be on disability and get child support, give her ex-boyfriend $70,000. Explain that, why are you talking disability? Why do you have Medicaid, but you have $70,000 to give out? Why do you want in your police reports, you explain, <laughs> Your Louis Vuitton or, or whatever it was, handbag and wallet were stolen. You're on disability, and you're claiming that your daughter stole your Louis Vuitton and 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 your purse. I mean, with the with the price value of thirteen hundred dollars for the for the purse and five hundred dollars or so, don't quote me or something like that, uh, for the wallet, and you're on disability. Listen, there, there's a there's a, there's a scam that was going on here for many years. Uh, many years in regards to, to sucking up my child support. You know, her saying that she only made $2,000 a year for disability and my $1,100 a month for child support. But now, records show she makes money. How does she make money? Huh. She made money off of my child support and through Daniel's income. So talking about exploiting a child. Get a job. So this, this is not Danielle's sure. income. Uh, people exploit because now she's she's been exploited before, like you described. But now she's being exploited uh, from her the celebrity she uh, developed from being on Doctor Phil. Yep. So how I'm much? Gonna, how, I'm how not much? Can't tell you quite yet yeah. how much she's making, but um, I have a document of what percentage she's getting. And when she's eighteen, she's going to be very pissed off. Oh really? But um, that 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 will um, all these all these documents. I just to let you know that I have everything is is being put together properly. 
It's going to be reviewed um, by attorneys before I go out and, and speak publicly because I, I do want to. I do want to protect Danielle and her rights. I really do. I don't want to be part of her, her exploitation. I don't. So there, there are things that I could say and, and, and show, and there's things that, that I will not show and I will not share um, for the privacy of her. I don't care about her, her, her handlers or her entertainment attorney or her, her family attorneys. I mean, the, the, the emails, the one emails that, that, uh, one of her, her family attorneys sent my attorney is disgusting. So Barbara has a history of going on. Unfortunately, she is uh, uh, somebody on my Facebook account. It could be her with a fictitious account or somebody else giving her all this information. And Barbara spends hours on hours on hours of going through statements and things. And anybody who who supports me or says anything, she, she attacks and she attacks badly. She would go to people's sites, click down, take pictures of their families, make fun of their families, send them nasty messages. Um, really. Uh, let, let me ask uh, you this. Because sure. I'm, getting, I'm getting nervous. I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> let me ask you this. I know. I know. She's going to call you and she's going to say, she's going to give you a thousand documents, but she's going to say, I'm not going to do an interview. <laughs> Let me ask you this, but though. Gonna... Dr. Phil, did, when, when, when they first came up with this plan, they're going to take this little girl, this little 14-year-old girl, and they're going to expose her to the world and all her problems and all her pain she's in. Did anybody come to you and say, do you want to participate in this? Nope. I have been eliminated from everything in Daniel's life. Nobody's ever contacted me in regards to any problems that she had in school, any law enforcement issues until I came to light um, after meeting her. Barbara has, has, has eliminated me from everything. And if I would have known that she got kicked out of every school, if I would have known she was doing drugs, if I would have known she was a runaway 50, 60 some odd times, if I would have known all these things, I would have gone after years ago to help her. But look, I, I allow Bar Barbara to have uh, – decision making and and she could raise Danielle but I didn't revoke any of my rights I was still a father at that time you know but nobody but then after like you said you know you're you, you're a private investigator believe me after this the phone calls that I made to the schools to directors of programs to DJJ, to DCF, to, to law enforcement. I couldn't believe what has gone on in this child's life. And nobody, nobody seemed to want it to help and just didn't want to deal with it. I mean, it, for, for the reports to come back and say that the mother failed to do this, the mother failed to do that, the mother failed to do this, or Danielle's a risk to this and Danielle's a risk, whatever. And nobody, just because they write it, what are your actions after to pr protect this child? Think about all the other children that they do this to. Yeah, yeah, Florida is the worst. Yeah. yeah, Child Protective Services, Florida is absolutely the worst. Everybody knows that. But now, now what about like when her criminal case now, like the pretrial sentencing reports, probation reports, were you contacted by probation officers to her pretrial sentencing report? Not until after. Really? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that stuff. Who does not call a father? Because Barbara tells them, do not call her father. There's been plenty of times the law enforcement said, she said, do not, he has no rights, don't call him, don't let him know, don't this, don't do that, don't whatever. But then when I started to inquire and doing, first of all, I should not do public records requests on her father. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I want public records requests on my daughter. That's the most ridiculous thing that in the whole world. I should get reports that are not redacted, period. I'm her father. I'm not the public. So for you, for you to say, oh, you need public records requests. And then, and then some entities would give me things that were redacted. Like, I can't fill in the blanks. Like, like I'm a five-year-old, and I can't fill in the blanks of a criminal report or a DCF report or a DJJ report. It's ridiculous. And it really is. This whole system is a complete failure. It is a complete failure, and it's disgusting. And and look, I maybe 
because all these years I wasn't able to love Danielle the way I wanted to love her. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much as say, you know, you you have a child in your life for 14 years and all of a sudden, bam, you're not in that child's life mm-hmm. anymore, which happens to, to, to many parents uh, th- these days. You yeah, know, it's horrific what goes um, on. Uh, uh, Ira, we got to take a commercial break. Okay. So like I told you, it's a four-minute long break. You won't be able to hear it. You have plenty of time to go take a break. And uh, uh, we'll be right back with more of Ira Peskowitz, uh, who is the father of Danielle Brigoli Peskowitz, uh, the Cash Me Outside girl from Dr. Phil's show. Uh, just a... Uh, uh, and now a word from our sponsors. Archival Revival, the Christian Film Archive, is currently paying for vintage Christian films. They are dedicated to preserving and restoring classic Christian films and media. So if you have original prints, negatives, or other film elements of classic Christian films, or you have audio recording masters for classic Christian record albums, they want to buy them from you. So email archival.revival at gmail. Dot com and they're going to make you an offer. Archival Revival wants to preserve these classic Christian films so that they continue saving people for years. These films have brought people to salvation. They want to continue that. Their staff has decades of experience in handling and preserving of film elements, utilize the very best climate control film storage facilities around the world. Contact them today at archival.revival at gmail.com. If there's someone you know, Has these prints, negatives, recording masters, or other materials from vintage Christian films? You can check out their blog at archivalrevival.blogspot.com. Now, just so you understand, Archival Revival wants to pay you for these films. So you can look in your church attic, in the church basement. If you have a friend who runs a Christian youth ministry, this youth vacation Bible study camp, they have these old films in those big metal containers, 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter. Archival Revival wants to buy them from you. So this is a sponsor that actually wants to give you money. And all you have to do is contact them, tell them what you have. If you're in the UK or Ireland or Africa, uh, these films are all over the world and they're gathering dust and they're going to deteriorate if they don't get into the hands of Archival Revival. So that's archival.revival at gmail.com or the blog spot is archivalrevival.blogspot.com. Don't forget, the show is brought to you by PSCoco.com. Phoebe Saad is an independent curator with the Cocoa Exchange. The Cocoa Exchange is formerly known as Dove Chocolate Discoveries, and they make the finest silky smooth chocolate because the products start with the best cocoa beans, which are tested for quality and flavor by expert technicians. The Cocoa Exchange offers not just premium chocolates, but anything from sauces and spices to brownie and cake mixes and even coffee and martini mixes. If you wish to treat yourself or someone you love to a sweet and tasty gift, then the Cocoa Exchange is the brand for you. So you go to PSCoco.com, you click on the Shop Now button, you can see all their beautiful chocolates, you can order it right now tonight, it could be in your mailbox in a couple of days, or if you want to get into the chocolate business, you want to be a a chocolatier just like Phoebe Saad, click the Contact Us button, and you can learn how to get your own website, go into the Cocoa Chocolate Business, and sell chocolate and make a little bit of money there. Remember, all these shows on Awake are brought to you by EmailRevealer.com. You can go to EmailRevealer.com and get a copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator. But you also do all kinds of different services for you. An online dating service investigation is called an online infidelity investigation. And that's where you give us your husband or your boyfriend, your girlfriend's email address, and we trace it back to their online dating websites. And we return a list of all the dating sites that that email is registered to. We can expand on that investigation and trace it back to porn sites, escort service sites, swinger sites, gambling websites, and even prescription drug websites. If you think your ex-husband or something is addicted to prescription medication, or involved in an extreme online pornography addiction, we can produce a report for you that you can use in court. Adoption investigations. If you want to locate your birth parents or your, or your birth child you gave away for adoption, we can do, do adoption investigations for you. Asset searches for you. Locate bank accounts, hidden assets, hidden properties, hidden income, all different kinds of services in the asset search investigation. Email tracing. If you need to locate or identify somebody from just an email address, we can do an email trace investigation for you and all kinds of digital forensics, computer and cell phone digital forensics, where we can recover deleted content from an email or a hard drive and produce a report for you that you can use in court. That's emailrevealer.com or you can contact me at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com.
Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. We're here with Ira Peskowitz uh, from Florida, who uh, just has a heartbreaking story here. He's the father of Daniela Brigoli Peskowitz, the girl from the Dr. Phil show. Uh, it's very difficult doing the show. Uh, in between the two episodes of uh, where she came back the second time, did you have any contact with Dr. Phil between those two episodes? Yeah, apparently they, they um, the executive producer, one of them, uh, on Facebook. Okay. Um, corresponding back and forth on Messenger and uh, wanted to do an interview with me, but we, uh, my attorney and advised me not to at that period of time. Uh, and then after a while, when I started seeing all these things happening to Danielle, I kind of reached out to them and, and said, hey, look, you know, you're trying to kind of to blame yeah. to this exploitation. I said, why don't you, you help pay some of my legal fees uh, to help protect my daughter from what's happening to her? No response. Then uh, a couple other times, I try to respond back to get a response from them in regards to certain things, nothing. And then Dr. Phil, all of a sudden, a month ago or three weeks ago, whatever, wanted to do a show on parental alienation and they wanted to hear stories. And I said, hey, you wanna hear a story? I got a great story for you. But Dr. Phil doesn't want anything to do with uh, Barbara or Danielle. I mean, he's, he's his comments on, on other talk shows and all the things, um, I mean, they, they, you know, they gotta give that guy credit. They made Danielle what she is today, but now they trash him. Incredible. Uh, Danielle and, and Barbara, they just, they just trash him. So, um, like I said, he doesn't want anything to do with it. You know, I, I had a period of time people were telling me, oh, you know, you should go back to Dr. Phil because you'll get, you know, a lot of the recognition and people will see you and then you get your story out. And other people are like, absolutely not. Do not go on that guy's show. And I had some people reach out to me. I had no idea who, who they were and just give me some stories um, about him and his past. And uh, after that, I said, huh, you know what? I'm, uh, I will never go on his show. Yeah, Never. it's just more exploitation. Uh -huh. Exploitation. Now, now, what about with you and Danielle? Any any social media contact back and forth? Were you, were you contacting you know, any kind of discussion in the public? No, we we uh, you know, there's a period of time there she she would attack me um, while she was on her Instagram and making money. She would tell the whole world that me, her father, had a sexual relationship. <laughs> with an underage known prostitute. Who says that about their father if she wasn't told that? And who is the scum who is videotaping it, because I heard your voice from her handler team making money off of this, allow a 14-year-old to say that mm -hmm. for millions to watch? Obviously, nobody believed it, but it's still to the point of who tells your child that I'm having a sexual relationship with an of a, with an underage known prostitute. That's disgusting. It's horrible. And then to make money off of it? Shameful. You're all disgusting scum. I know every one of you. And you're all sitting there laughing, collecting a paycheck now. But you know, this isn't going to last forever. You know, so... Now, you know, e even the, the, the music video is, is pretty disgusting. You know what I mean? Uh, I guess there's no nudity, but still... Uh, I couldn't watch the whole thing. I, I don't want to watch that. It's just disgusting. Uh, so she's being. It's horrible yeah. for a 14 year old to, to talk about sex. Yeah. Oral sex. To put her in an electric chair. You know, Danielle has a lot of issues she needs to address to get better. And to put a child in an electric chair and pretend that you're 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 sending them to the death sentence after a court hearing is horrible. Horrible. I mean, I, I've got other words, Ed, that I want to say. Yeah. I'm not going to say them. And then, do you know, is she getting any kind of therapy or counseling now, anything at all? Any treatment? No, I can't. I can't, I can't comment on that. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. I mean, what about yourself? Now, you've been through trauma here. Are you getting any kind of counseling or therapy over this? Listen, I'm getting, I have a very, very strong um, external support group. <laughs> I've got great family, great friends. I've got great services um, within my place of employment, right. and uh, and everybody who needs the help 
is getting the help. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm going to tell you. But um, we don't – look, I'm not, I'm not the one. I know all these people wanted to do between the employee, the, the, the attorneys and the handler team or whatever you want to call it, the management team, all they wanted to do was push me over the edge to do something drastic they could use against me. And they push and they push and they push. But you know what? They could keep pushing, and I'm still here. And every time they push me and they, they knock me over for, for a moment, I get back up, and I don't react the way they wanted me to react. I don't react with violence. I don't do anything illegal. I turn around. I look at my, my, my children. I look at my wife. I, I get dressed. I go to work. You know, I, I call my mom. I speak to friends. And there's other ways to redirect your frustration instead of acting out on ways that they could take advantage of. Oh, they would love for me to do something stupid. Shoot off an email, uh, go punch one of them in the face. I mean, they, they would just love, love that to use that against me, but I didn't feed into it. I mean, you, you gotta see some of this stuff. When it's time, uh, and it's okay, I will send you some of these communications right. uh, 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 between the attorneys and uh, the, the management team. It is just, it's disgusting. And it's not privileged information. It's not from client to, you know, um, it, it, it was set forth in, 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 in records um, and email communications uh, to me and to the media. So it's not like it's uh, protected, you know, uh, documentation. And you were saying to me off the air that at one point you, you were told that you were being banned from, uh, from media, from large public media. Uh, uh in order to stop from getting your side yeah. of the story out? Yeah, one of, one of, the, one of the, the, the managers, um, there's um, a journalist who's very supportive and wrote some emails in regards to uh, what's been going on with Danielle, and she didn't approve with the way she was being um, exploited. Right. And they rambled back a bunch of emails saying, well, you know, obviously you got your sources from Ira Peskowitz, and obviously Ira is coercing you and not telling you the truth. And, and it also just to let you know that Ira has been banned from all media outlets, including TMZ, Palm, the Palm Beach Post, Hollywood Life, and I don't know, one other. And it's funny because I have a few text messages and, and correspondence back with the executive producer from TMZ who recently wanted to do an interview from me. I spoke with the people who did reports and, and journalists at the Palm Beach Post. I am not banned from any of these uh, media um, outlets um, whatsoever. I've never coerced anybody into doing an interview. Everybody has reached out to me. I've never told a lie. I never wanted people to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to tell a story to hopefully protect uh, my daughter and to help others. And, and again, it's not, you know, Ed, you asked about me. I, I'm here. I, I've made it through my life. You know, I, I'm established. Danielle isn't. Right. She's not established. She hasn't made it through her life. She doesn't know what it's like to be a, a teenage child. She doesn't know what it's like to be part of a family. She doesn't know what love is all about. I've shared those things, and I wanted to share those things with her. But obviously... People don't want me to be part of that because I ruin their, their fantasy, their fantasy of this exploitation, this fantasy of, of making as much money as they possibly can off of her. How, how many people right now, how many people right now are making their living off of this little 14 year old kid? Um, well, why don't you, what, let's, let's, let's think about attorneys. So we have two defense attorneys. We have one, two family attorneys. We have an entertainment attorney. We have another attorney who, you know, Barbara's being sued for, for Daniel's lack of supervision. You know, that incident that happened downtown Lake Worth when there was a fight and someone was beat, beaten. So there's quite a few attorneys. Then we have, you know, this is this is quoted from uh, from Billboard. You have there's three 
male managers. There's one full-time babysitter, well, bodyguard, whatever you want to call him. There is a tutor, and um, maybe some people who are giving her help on, on the outside. So there, there's there's a lot of a lot of people who have their vested interest financially um, to keep me out of the picture. Not not for the best interest of Danielle, but just to to work work over me. You should see some of the. I'm telling you. <laughs> The, the, the things that they say about me are just disgusting, are untruthful, misleading, disgusting. And, and you know what? In this 10-month period, I've never even had the opportunity to address the courts. When I did during her sentencing hearing, I was able to say two paragraphs and the judge cut me off. 10 months. 10 months. I was, I was at a hearing once with my attorney and other attorneys. I had to beg and raise my hand like I was a one-year-old or two-year-old to go to the bathroom during elementary school or whatever. Excuse me, teacher, can I get up and speak to my attorney? That's the most disgusting part of this thing. It, it, it just, it, it's just horrible that I had to sit there and raise my hand to the judge. Your Honor, can I speak to my attorney so he could say something? So I couldn't ever expose the truth. Never, ever share what is going on, because they prevented from it. The most important things to these attorneys was, oh, Ira shouldn't know where Danielle lives because it's detrimental for her well-being. Or, oh, Ira shouldn't get her financials because Ira's going to tell the media what, what Danielle and the management team is. These, these are the motions. These are the, the thousands of dollars I pay for an attorney to go there and argue. What does that have to do with Danielle's best interest? Because cause they didn't want me to know where she lived. The reason why they didn't want me to know where she lived in California because she was violating her probation numerous times. And when people post things on social media, and this is something you probably know, and it, it, it's, not, it's not a deep, deep secret. When you post something on social media and you hit your location device, there's a few steps through Google Chrome. You could find out exactly where that stuff was posted. So I don't, I don't use, you know, my police stuff, like borrowers made allegations to do this. This is all publicly known through a simple Google search. They didn't want me to hire a private investigator to see that Danielle was violating her probation. You, you didn't want me to hire a private investigator to see that all these different people are in and out of coming out of, out, out of the house where they're living. That, that was the problem. It wasn't, it, it, Danielle couldn't care less if I knew where she, where she was staying in, in, in Hollywood, California. And what about, does she go to school at 14? Uh, she, she does this, uh, yeah. this online fictitious reality, I don't know, virtual school with a tutor yeah. that probably does all of her homework for her. Oh, boy. This kid's business, she hasn't never had a chance, you know? And, and nope. uh, they're swarmed around like a bunch of vultures. Uh, <laughs> is, is there any future court dates or anything like that? There's nothing, right? Not that I, not that I know of, uh, right. of yet. And I try to keep that quiet because... Um, the judge doesn't like the the media show there, so and I get it too. It gets kind of uh, overbearing at times because again, you know, you have to think about Danielle. You know, you want to protect her 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 vulnerability, her life, her privacy, um, and you don't have them all there in, in court and everything, and chasing her down and giving her more uh, more attention than she really needs is not the proper thing for her. Now, I haven't kept up with this. When she's on, like, Instagram and stuff like now, and YouTube, I guess, uh, what's her attitude now? Does she still have that defiant attitude, or, or is she kind of calmed down? I, I don't know. Okay. Listen, I, I, I try to have communication with her. They changed her phone number numerous times. They said that they changed it because I was harassing her. Well, I have, I have documents from our phone company saying, you know, they say, oh, Ira had a, a, a brief conversation with Danielle because they told TMZ or whatever it was or make it sound like, or the attorneys, that, that Danielle doesn't want to speak to me. I spoke to her for 25 minutes one, one day. You know, we, Ed, I tell the story all the time. On her birthday of last year, my, my one son called to wish her a happy birthday. They took the phone from her. I called to wish her a happy birthday. They took the phone and and were laughing in the background and hung up on me. Then my, my uh, nine-year-old son in the evening time called and uh, the phone picked up. 
and he said, Danielle, Danielle, he said, uh, it's, it's your brother, Yvonne. I want to wish you a happy birthday. And a guy got on, it was her bodyguard, got on and said, she doesn't call you daddy anymore. She calls me daddy and hung up. Hmm. Ed, that was horrible that you would say that in front of a nine-year-old child that has nothing to do with this. To say that, even to a father, he know he thought it was funny. He was cute because he was, whatever, at some Italian restaurant in L.A. Believe me. <laughs> don't don't think that I can't find out that you were sitting right next to her at that time, because when we pull your phone records, it's going to show your location on you were sitting right next to Danielle during that time in that restaurant. Don't play me like a fool, like these all these idiots are. They're all a bunch of liars. They're all a bunch of scumbags. But to say that in front of my nine-year-old child, my wife was saying it too because she was on speakerphone. And to say that she calls me daddy, not you anymore. Listen, if this was, if I was Joe the plumber, things would be handled a little differently. But I'm not Joe the plumber. I can't respond the way other fathers would respond. And believe me, I have a lot of people that came up to me or said things to me that said, oh, you know, I don't know how you do it. I would have done this, I would have done that, I would have done this, I would have done that, I would have done that. And you know, sometimes you want to fight the good fight. Yeah. And sometimes you fight and you fight and you fight. And you keep fighting. But you know what? I have, I have much more of a life than just being in the ring. So much more to accomplish in my life. So much more to do for others that I can't do for one child but I could sure as hell try to help protect other children around the world and other parents. And one day, Danielle might come around. She might be 18. She might be 25. She might be 40 and say, Oh my God, dad, I really screwed up. These guys did this, this and said this and this and this and this and did this and whatever. And I could show her thousands of documents of proving how I wanted to be part of her life and how I wanted to, to better herself within society. Well, I, I can encourage, I, ones, yeah. you know, Ed, same on the ones, like I say, who are making money off yeah. of her, but yeah, I, I made a list. There's a shitload of people making money off of her. And I am one who is not, isn't it interesting that the one who's not making money off of her wants the best interest of her. You know, I, I, I can just encourage you in this way. You know, I, I have thousands of times people come to me, and they want to locate their long lost father or their long lost mother, you know, and uh, she's not when she does and she will, you know, she's not going to come to you and say, Dad, show me all the proof. Show me all the paperwork because in her heart, she knows what's going on. This kid's been exploited from beginning to end. All she knows is exploitation at this point. And uh, so you keep that door open. You know, I'm, I'm confident, you know, that uh, like the prodigal son, you know, they all come around. Uh, so I, I wish you the best. It, it, you got like one minute. Is there one thing you want to leave us with before we got to go? Yeah, Ed, real quick. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you. And second of all, what are the courts going to do these days? Since there's an increase in same-sex marriage, which I don't oppose, two men, two fathers are going to go in front of the judge. Who's the judge going to pick now? Yeah, who's going to screw you? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know? <laughs> who, who, whose rights are they going to violate? Because yeah. they've been violating father's rights for all these years <laughs> whose rights are they going to violate yeah. tell me ed because you know it's coming soon you know those divorce rates and, and same-sex marriage is coming it, you know it, who are they going to give it to who are they going to give the child to yeah but anyways on, on that note ed i really appreciate your time uh thank you for having me um uh, when the time is right i, I you know i um I, i'm gonna send you uh I guess uh, an outline. Yeah. Um, some of my uh, speaking arrangements and stuff, and and, I, and I'll share some documents with you for sure. So wait, you could read them yourself. Cause as, a, yeah. as a private investigator, you know, I'm sure you you like to you like to have you know proof of hardcore proof that you could read word to word and say, oh my god. Well, yeah. If anything comes up between you know now and then, whatever. If you need to get on the air and make something public, uh, just let me know. We'll put you right on the air. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ira. All right, so bye. Bye. Oh, my God. It's so painful, man. I tell you, uh, you know, the one thing, um, 
because I was about my age, 49 years old, I'm 55, and men our age, that they say that uh, the one thing, the biggest uh, cause of like heart attacks, and you know, and uh, is the feeling that you've been treated unfairly, and you know, obviously the guy's been treated unfairly, but but when you have that feeling in your heart that I've been treated unfairly, it just aches on you, and aches on you, and aches. You can hear the pain in the guy's voice. And anybody, you know, even a casual observer can go look this up. And you can look up Dr. Phil, Cash Me Outside. How about that? You know, this little girl, uh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel or Michelle, Daniel Brigoli. You can just watch this for yourself. It's heartbreaking to watch this kid, this little kid being put on Dr. Phil for exploitation. There's no reason. You don't need to put this kid on the show for a whole hour and then to send her to some camp and to... Uh, pet horses up in Utah and then they have her come back, you know, and they do it again, you know, so just, you know, I just encourage everybody to pray for this family and this little Danielle and fire and the, the mother and father and all these leeches, man. He was telling me after you know, all these people leeching and exploiting this kid up until this day. It's just heartbreaking. So I, I hope you, uh, you know, hey, listen, some shows are painful, you know, some shows are painful. They're not all fun, you know, and I just, yeah, I don't know what to say. So, if you enjoy the work we're doing here and you support the work, you can go to OppermanReport.com. You can become a member, and that's what keeps the show on the air, keeps it supported. I've been encouraging people lately to um, go to the uh, OppermanReport.com, and there's a little PayPal where you can support monthly. You can make a little donation monthly to support the show. But really, you know, as we keep expanding, you want to sponsor the show. You want to advertise on the show. Got really great rates, and the more uh, stations we can get on, uh, the better guests we can book, the more power we have, the more uh, uh, um, significance we have to, to book bigger guests and, and handle more serious topics and uh, and really get some good work done. Okay, and I want to thank you all for coming and listening to the show. To the Opperman Report, we had Ira Peskowitz, the father of Danielle Brigoli, the Cash Me Outside girl from Dr. Phil. And Danielle, wherever you are, God bless you. Okay, if you ever need any help, if you want to get, if you're listening to this, Danielle, okay, I. I'm an old guy. I've seen a lot of things. You're being exploited. And if you need help, just get a hold of me at OppermanReport 